Alright Landers, so today continuing over our new character showcase, so today we're highlighting the character that I was most excited for in this banner, a new 1000 year Blood War version of Rangiku. Very happy they finally included her after skipping her last month with Sangdu and also Toshiro. But one of the main reasons why I was most looking forward to this character is given that her design is very different in the original anime. Of course, if you compare the models right now, one's ginger, one's blonde, and I really do like Thousand Year Blood with Rangiku's design. So I was very excited to see it in game. Her model looks absolutely great. And can we talk about the art for a second? You know, simping aside here, lads, I think this is one of the best arts in the entire game. The pose itself just looks great. Is it one of my favorites of the year thus far? Now, Rangiku is going to be your Limit Breaker character of the month with that she does have skills based around how many kills that she does get. And she herself is a Technique Soribo with the Aranka kill ability, which is quite noteworthy given that there hasn't been that many good Technique Aranka killers, especially ranged ones. If we have a look at the characters that you can use, obviously Aizen is still a great character, but here's a normal attack damage character. They kind of fit both needs, right? Not all the time do I want to use someone like Aizen. Instead, sometimes I want to use an SP character, and that option, as of late, has been lacking, and that's what Rangiku is there to fill. With that said, though, if we have a look at her skills, what actually makes her a good character, it really comes down to the damage output. For starters, she has two enemies defeated bonuses. After defeating 20 enemies, she gets a 20% full stamina damage boost. And then after 40 kills, which she can easily get, and it also means that she can get this max bonus in Guild Quest content, she then gets an additional 40% more damage at full stamina. That's really high. So essentially, she has a 60% full stamina damage boost. Her soul trait is an additional 40% more strong attack damage when you are at full stamina. Although it's a different multiplier, so that's actually good. And then you have a look at her skills. She has Frenzy plus two. When you inflict a status limit, she gets an 80% SP boost. Keep in mind, she can inflict last ray on every single attack. And then with that, she does allow herself and other technique attribute Soripers to do 40% more damage to any enemy affected with status limit. So damage output wise, I mean, she's kind of packing, right? She's got a lot of multipliers here, buffing up her damage, especially when she does inflict a status limit. To go alongside that too, she has weakened defense when you use your soul bomb. Not only are you lacerating, you're also freezing them. And then again, you can do more damage to those afflicted enemies. You can heal your team, potentially allow you to stay at full stamina if you do take any potential damage. She has Havoc, she has Long Strider, she has some utility skills such as Guard Break and Hidden Enemies. On paper, just from skills alone, she was setting up to be one of the best Technique characters in the game. Simple as that. Unfortunately though, when we take it into gameplay, you'll see that her strong attacks aren't the greatest. Now, I don't think it's bad, but it's definitely not the best kit that you possibly would want for your potential favorite character. So her SA1 is a pushback attack, an 18% magnification. Probably one of the worst SA ones you can get. Again, I don't think it ruins her, but it definitely stops her from being the best technique character in the game, right? And that's really the only bad thing about the character. The SA2, some people don't like. I personally love this attack. I don't mind it. Especially with a character like this that wants to inflict status limits. Since that's where a lot of her damage does come from, being able to have those attacks that do hit quite a few times, especially with someone that doesn't have the increased chance to inflict status limits, it does give her best chance to inflict status limits so you can get the 80% SP boost, right? Now, of course, I would have loved a potential 960 tracking vortex, but I'm not going to really nitpick, right? I think the character is fine as she is. Sure, she could have been better, but it doesn't stop him from being a fun and good character. Now, right now, we are going through the quest. Not the fastest, I will be honest. But that's kind of expected with this character. She doesn't have an increased chance to inflict stars elements, nor does she have killer. I think whenever you are wanting to play this character in Heritage Strauss, let's say, for example, you want to use the Halley Bell link on her. Make her your super links or farmer. Let's say you're a Rangiku fan. I'm sure there's many of you lads out there. Well, in Biomage, you can definitely do that, especially when she does have killer. With killer, I think she'll be a pretty good character to use, right? Let's go ahead and use our SA3. And then one, I think we might have actually missed the bosses. Did we hit any of them? I don't think we did, unfortunately. That SA3... Is your best attack to do a lot of damage. And unfortunately, I kind of messed up there. Let's finish up with the free though. I think visually, by the way, she looks great. She doesn't look like the most super impressive character visual-wise. But I think for what it is, it's a Rangiku using Hainako, right? It's definitely the best that we've seen in BBS for someone like Rangiku. Let's use the SA3. Back it up. Push back with the 1. And then group everyone together with the 2. That gives us the 80% SP boost. Let's keep our distance. And then use our SA1. As you'll see there, Bambi Air went down relatively quick. And then we finish up with Candice with the SA3. One thing too I like is how seamless the naturing is too. So as you can see, our Heineko is actually out. But then when we use our naturing, the blade turns to the mist, right? I think visually this character is good as she possibly can be, right? Especially that SA3. It looks really cool. Given that she just does mist attacks, I feel like they did a good job. Especially with that. You have, like, the slashes alongside it. Let's push back with the one. Do the two. And I think we should be able to saw bomb into it, right? 
So now I really love that sword bomb. I always like it when it, we get a sword that has two characters in it. So having Toshi appear to finish up the attack is kind of cool. It's just like in the anime. And that pose is also from the anime as well. And you'll see that at least when we used our soul bomb, right? We applied the lacerate. We applied the freeze. The enemies couldn't move. And then we also applied weaker defense. So we then did 30% more damage on top of the fact that, remember, we're doing 40% more anyway. Because we applied the status element. So in this case, for our very first run... 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Not the greatest. Let's try that once more and try and go for a faster clay time. All right, then. So run number two. Let's see how this does go. Use the SA1 to inflict the Styles element. SA2 pushes those back. Then we'll use the one here. And then we'll use our SA3. A good amount of damage there. I think if we had an increased chance to Styles element, that would have been actually really good here. At least for Inheritance Shards. But I don't mind her not having it. Because at least when you take it into Guild Quest, a cat. Because at least when you take it into Guild Quest, you know, it doesn't make or break. It doesn't really add much to the character, right? Because you only go against one speed enemy. But I guess it would have been nice to be fair, especially because she is kind of around, like, based around inflicting styles elements. Uh, in this case, I don't want to use my SA3 just yet, even though it adds a few extra seconds. Now let's use the SA3. Realize I didn't have my SP boost. Probably should have used an SA2 there instead. And the SA2 there did give us that like 80% SP boost. So it's, at least the attack is good. For inflicting status limits, right? And the character naturally has built in long strides, so I really do like that. It means as bonus abilities, you can give a full stamina damage and also SP. Because personally, I don't like playing with characters that don't have long stride. Uh, let's go here. Actually, hold on. Let's uh, let's push back. Then go down here. Use our SA2. Back up. Then free. 54k on the Masaki. So at least against the bosses, we're doing a lot of damage, right? Especially if we stay at full stamina. At least for content like this, you know, Inheritance Strouds... The Iron Skin is ultimately the thing that's kind of stopping us from clearing fast. Let's push back. Then free. Look at that. The bosses definitely are not a problem for Rangiku, right? You see, we absolutely dominate them there. And that SA3 feels really powerful laying off. Especially given that the SA1 and 2, again, isn't, there, isn't really the greatest attack. Now, when can I actually use my Soul Bomb? I guess after using the SA3. There we go. And then the SA2 absolutely makes quick work of those. So in that case, for Corp Ultra IT at 1-5, we cleared in a minute and 55 seconds, which I guess kind of makes sense for this character. Is that something that you want to do? I mean, if you're a Rangiku fan, two minute clear time maybe isn't too bad. But I think when she has killer, right? As always, when you're playing IT, you want to have killer, right? Unless you have Pierce Iron Skin, I don't like using characters when they don't have killer in Inheritance Strouds. And in her case, since she's got a 1 minute and 55 second clip I'm here, when she has killer, which again, remember she has a Ranga killer, you can probably get that down to like 1 minute and 20, 1 minute and 30, which honestly is pretty good, even for the strong attack kit that she does have. Next up though, let's take it into the Menos Grande Awakened Epic Raid. The boss itself has 72 million hammer. The boss itself has 72 million stamina. I have no idea if we're going to be able to beat it with only using Rangiku by herself. We'll try and do a solo run, see how far we can can go with Yuma Chica, we were able to beat in under a minute, but Yuma Chica has the advantage of being able to one constantly inflict status elements and also two, he has a good SA2, the barrage attack, which can do a good amount of damage against stationary bosses. In Rangiku's case, her SA1 and 2 are less ideal for epic grade content given the boss itself can't get pushed back. For the build that we are using, though, we are gonna be using these three accessories, these free soul traits. We have the best pets possible. 60% Berserker, 60% full stamina. And again, bonus abilities remain unchanged. Full stamina and also SP. Usually, I would like to give characters weaker defense, but we don't have to since she already has it built in. Now, I believe the unfortunate part here is that we can't inflict last rate when the boss is attacking. We found that out when Ichigo got released. So we really have to actually get lucky with the status of a boost here. But I guess from afar, when we're playing epic raids like this, we get to see her visuals more clearly. And that SA2 looks great from far distance. Same with the SA3. But again, what you're seeing here is that it's taking quite a while for us to get the SP boost. And that's ultimately the biggest problem with this character. And it's not even like her fault. It's just last three isn't good in epic raids, right? I shall see here. And we're doing good damage. If we had the SP boost, it'd be great. Like, this is the only time we can fix star elements. So let's go down here. Now let's use the SA2. Hopefully get it. No, still haven't got it. SA3 now? No, still haven't got it. Okay. We're now officially a minute in. <laughs> it's brutal for last week cards, I'll be honest. I get it though, last week stops the boss from attacking, so I can understand why they've done it, but man, it sucks. Slowly but surely, we're eventually gonna get the SP boost. There we go, finally. 100k on the SA1. Unfortunately, right at the end of the boss though. But now we have it, so we can use our SA3 right away. 300k per hit. With Frenzy Plus 2, that's really good. We might have to do a few resets here. Reset until we get SP boost. Because if we do, it makes a big difference. Now, unfortunately, this is where we die. We weren't able to clear his face quick enough. 
Because you'll see, even though we used our Sobom, it didn't inflict a Star Zement, so we didn't even get the 80% SP boost there. So, uh, kind of a bad first attempt, I'll be honest. Very rarely, anyway, do you do solo run, so maybe it's not a big deal. But let's try it once more. I think there is potential here. All right, then, so attempt number two. Hopefully, we can get an SP boost right away. It looks to not be the case here. I guess I could use my Sobom, but probably wouldn't want it, right? I want to save that for the second phase. Let's use our free. Got the SP boost there. That's good. Notice a pretty good damage increase. I think the SA3 itself was hitting 300k there. More of that would be good. Let's go forwards. Once more, let's use the free. Unfortunately, no stars in here. I gotta say, though, now that we've played the character in Epic Raids and we have, like, a more clearer view of the character and their strong attacks, I think the SA1 and 2 look great from afar. Let's go down here. There we go. The SA3 also looks kind of cool. Got the SP boost. That's good. But the SA3 looks better when you are a closer screen. There we go. So let's use our Sobom now. Got the 80% SP boost. 400k on the Sobom right now. That's good. Let's follow up with the two. Then one. Can we kill fast enough though? I'm not too sure. If we get an SP boost now, that'd be great. Like now, for example, there we go. Potential. No, it's not. I know I could actually give the character the bomb. So I can destroy these faster. But I, I kind of don't like doing that. I'm not going to lie. So we'll take the L there. I mean, very rarely do you ever play Epic Rage by yourself anyway, but I do like to test that stuff. She was able to do a good amount of damage there, but ultimately, same with any other character that has last rate. You can't inflict last rate when the boss is attacking. That kind of hurts you from inflicting Stazzlements if you don't have an increased chance to inflict said Stazzlements. That might be a problem when you're by yourself, though. Let's try and open up a lobby. Probably won't be that big of a deal when you have five other people playing with you. All right, then, so here we go. We have a lobby of four Rangiku, a Grunjao, and also Aoetsu. Which could be good. Let's use our Sobom. Get the 80% SP boost right away. Also apply the weakened defense. Hopefully every other Rangiku can follow suit. We really need to get through that second phase super quick. Especially if no one has any potential, you know, pets to destroy those uh, those bombs that would instant kill us. Alright, Rangiku used their Sobom. That's good. That's the weakened defense applied. Number one Zapato Kreya coming through with the, the Sobom too. We'll take it. The map is quite big, so the long strike does help out here. There we go. Marina, unfortunately, has died. I'm let her be okay. Not too bad. Hopefully, they can revive and then also use their sub on. Because the third phase actually is for we're forced to take a hit here. So, we don't want to, you know, preferably lose that full stamina damage, right? Let's stand there. SA2. Got my 80% SP was lovely. Yeah, I'm on. Sub on went off. Nice. Okay. That one's too bad. That one's too bad. So, in that case... 4 minutes and 11 seconds for Rangiku. That's pretty good for 72 million HP. Uh, farming Epic Rage right now on Rangiku days aren't really the worst thing to do. I still think Yumichika Day is better. We were able to clear Yumichika runs in like 30 or so seconds. Shout out to these lads though for getting us through it. But yeah, 48 seconds is good. When you have 4 Rangikus, when you have 6 players actually doing damage against at least this boss, right? 72 million is a lot of HP. If we were going against a normal Epic Raid boss with only like 20 million, maybe at most 50, th there might have been hope that we could clear it, despite the drawback of us not being able to inflict Stazzlements when the boss is attacking. But against 72 million, that's a bit too much for someone like Rangiku. And ultimately, uh, it comes down to the Stazzlement, but the kit itself really isn't the greatest for stationary content like this, Epic Raids, for example. And then last but not least, we're taking it into Limit Breaker. Now, we have showcased this on the channel already. She's a pretty good Limit Breaker character. Now, I will say, at least when compared to other Limit Breaker characters, characters designed for Limit Breaker, she's definitely one of the weaker ones. Not to say she's bad, but again, ultimately, as already stated, it comes down to the kit itself. The SA1 and 2 being range collision. More so just the SA1, really. Because Ruka, the character that released two months ago, January's Limit Breaker character... I mean, she has the same exact SA2, and that's perfectly fine. It's just the SA1. Not having, like, a beam when most characters do, you know, it does hurt the character a tad bit in terms of the meta standpoint, if you care about that. Now, we did try her out in two different teams. One where we had Quincy Ichigo giving her strong attacks back every time she's available. And then we also tried her without Quincy Ichigo. So we had to use our strong attacks more strategically. And for the most part, she performed relatively well. Like, yes, the range collision might be a tad bit annoying. You might have to use an extra strong attack or two. But it didn't stop us from getting relatively far. For the most part, in both teams, we were easily able to get to stage 25 plus. One team using Ichigo, we were able to get to, like, bleed 28. And then when we took out Ichigo and we used Ryoka instead, a better character for slot number two, even even though we weren't getting our strong attacks back every single time, we still were able to get upwards to like stage 30. The fact that she can apply lacerate 
and also freeze with the weakened defender soul bomb. Felt really good in my opinion. So if you do decide to use your soul bomb, let's say you're using Yuha in your team where you get to use two soul bombs. Using your soul bomb on Rangiku stage definitely might be something you want to do because it ensures that you do significantly more damage, right? Essentially 70% more damage. 40% from the skill and then 30% from the weakened defense. And I did realize, to be fair, when you do inflict a stat as a man, you do like crazy amount of damage. Her damage output is actually pretty high, I will be honest. Especially on that SF3, I felt very powerful doing it. And yeah, despite the range collision, I honestly didn't mind using this character in Limit Breaker, where you think these these strong attacks wouldn't be that good. I would say, though, I'm not sure what squad would have taken off this character, but the Poise Break skill does exist. And Poise Break on this character in particular, I feel like would have done this character wonders, right? Poise Break, for the most part, is the Limit Breaker skill. And she really would have benefited from it, given the fact that she does have range collision in a game mode where you're going against enemies that have poise. Maybe getting rid of the long stride might have been something that I wouldn't have mind, because long stride you can give us a bonus ability. You can't give poise breakers a bonus ability. Likewise, maybe weakened defense. I'm not entirely too sure what Sky would have wanted off this character. But Poise Break would have been a really nice addition for someone like Rangiku, who for the most part is a Limit Breaker character. So with that said, overall, I like the character. I'm a Rangiku fan. I'm happy to have her. I've had a lot of fun with her Tessa now in Limit Breaker Quest. I didn't mind her gameplay in IT. Although, again, keep in mind, she's not really designed for that. But when she does have killer, honestly, she's going to play just fine. Epic Raids wasn't too impressed with that game mode. But if you are in a full lobby, she'll perform just fine. I would have loved to see Poise Break on this character. And I will say, while we haven't showcased it in this video, we will do it later this week. She should be a good character in Guild Quest. Being able to inflict Lacerate will stop the enemies from actually attacking you. Since she busts Technique character's damage to status afflicted enemies, that pairs well with a very good, a very good ranged Ronk killer that is also Technique as a sorry that being Thousand Year Blood War Aizen. Here's your team booster for that particular week, so these two characters actually benefit from each other. More so, she allows Aizen to do more damage. And Lacerate will stop the enemies from spamming their strong attacks. So I'm very curious to see how she is in the form in Guild Quest content, especially when paired with Aizen, because right now it's looking like a pretty good duo, in my opinion. And again, because she has weakened defense to, again, more damage that you're, like, you're allowing your team to do, right? So yeah, overall, I'd say she's just a good character. I don't think she's anything, like, super amazing. If you have her, you can have fun with her. If you don't have her, you're probably not missing out on much. That's not to say she's bad. I still think she's one of the best technical characters in the game. But there's definitely a lot of competition. And there's definitely better characters out there that are just better than her, right? Ultimately, that comes mainly down to the SA1. Had she just been given a beam attack, I'd have, like, no problems with this character's gameplay. It's not because, quite frankly, I wanted Thousand Year Battle Rangiku. She looks great. I've been having a lot of fun with her. Her model looks great, too. Visually, I think she looks cool. Overall, just a solid character. Not every character in the game has to be the best character in the game, right? I'm fine with that. And Rangiku fans, this character is more so for you. I'm sure if you pull down, you have her, you're having a blast playing with her. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the Guild Quest showcase that we will do later this week. Hope to see you guys there. Take care and peace.